morning, uh, or actually afternoon. Uh, so today's kind of pretty cool day. Uh, so what we're actually going to do is rotate the motors under power. Uh, so you saw in the previous test, basically I was just turning uh, the motor shaft and just to get a reading on the encoders on all four of the encoders, just to make sure that we were communicating between the RoboClaw motor controllers and the Arduino. So now we're actually going to apply power. So there's a few aspects of that that have been kind of weighing on me a little bit. Um, partly having to do with the, the wiring, but most critically having to do with the two LiPo uh, lithium polymer battery packs. Uh, so these are battery packs that I've chosen, and, and I will go into these in more detail in a, in a future episode. But uh, these are battery packs that I've chosen specifically because of their capabilities in managing the uh, current and voltage, uh, which is critical for these types of batteries, uh, as I want to make Rover solar powered. So these batteries actually have the circuitry in them uh, to manage the inflow and outflow of power. That being said, because they have that circuitry, they have kind of protect they they have kind of protect themselves against people like me. So if the motors were to draw too much current, the batteries will shut off. And kind of sitting in the back of my mind was the concern that if that happens, what would be the resulting impact on the on the uh, logic boards, on the RoboClaws. So if the RoboClaws, which are now configured to be getting their logic power from the main batteries and the main batteries shut off, are they cool? Or is the communication coming from the Arduino still going to cause something to go weird? Um, so basically kind of a lots of ifs that need to be answered. Um, so those kind of weighing on me anyway. Um, so, yeah, let's get to it. Basically, the layout, the circuitry, um, everything is the same as what you saw in the previous uh, episode. What we're really going to do now, the only difference is apply power. So, we're going to update the code or create a new sketch for the Arduino Uno, which will instruct all four motors to start turning. And uh, we should still be able to review the serial monitor to check out what the encoders are saying and go from there. So let's take a look. So what we're looking at here is the new RoboClaw drive test, drive test one. And let's we'll just scroll through here. Um, much of this is the same uh, as what we've seen before. We've updated some definitions. Uh, we still need here the uh, the relay controls to flip the first and last, and that and right there, that's our hex value um, to turn on those two relays, to flip those two relays. Uh, next, we've got some variable definitions to control the, um, the uh, RoboClaws, and up top there you saw the uh, variables to define the uh, capabilities of the motors. So basically we need to instruct the RoboClaw as to um, what these motors are able to do. Uh, so basically we need the RoboClaw to understand how fast or slow these motors can run. So when we tell it to go X speed for Y distance, it needs to understand how fast is it actually going to get there. And that's what these values are here. So if, so if we tell it to travel five, uh, at 5,000 for 35,000 um, ticks, then it needs to have that feedback from the motors so that it understands how fast it got there or, and when it actually achieved its destination. Um, so RoboClaw actually has the capability of messaging both motors on each RoboClaw simultaneously. Um, here we're actually communicating with each motor on each RoboClaw individually. Uh, it just gives us more granular control. Um, and we'll actually come back to why that's um, of value to us. Um, but basically we're using both addresses 
um, and both motors at each of the two addresses. So here we're basically telling it to accelerate at 18,000, travel at 5,000, um, that's the speed, and then for a distance of 35,000 ticks. Um, and then here we've got the same code as before uh, to communicate back to the RoboClause as to what the motors are actually doing, basically, basically the encoder values. So let's hit the, uh, the upload here, um, send it over to the Arduino, which will then uh, send it over to the RoboClause, and then we'll take a look at the serial monitor to check out what's going on. So let's hit the, uh, the upload, and uh, we should hear the, uh, the relays. There they go. And now we're just waiting. The motors are turning. And there we got it. So the, uh, the motors are just now beginning to slow down and we should see the speeds coming off. So there we go. And we're hitting uh, a zero speed there. So awesome, everything looks good. So let me show you what that actually looked at like at the motors. So we're waiting for the Arduino to start flickering on us. There it goes. Now the relays. There are the relays. And now for the motors. There they go. So they'll run for a few seconds. And then come to a stop. Awesome. So that was pretty great to see. Um, it's always fun to see how code can actually kind of come to life. Uh, in the real world. It's very different from writing software uh, for anything else. Um, so getting back to, to Rover, um, what I wanted to point out was the results, the encoder values, and what that means and why, for example, I had mentioned that we want to take a look and control each individual f of the four motors rather than having uh, the RoboClaw kind of manage for us the individual motors and just communicate with each RoboClaw. Um, so let's take a look at the uh, the encoder results. But let me rerun our uh, serial monitor is still going here, but let me rerun the script on the Arduino. There are the motors going again. And they're stopped. Okay. So what I wanted to point out here was uh, let me stop the auto scroll. So if, we were, if you look closely here at speeds 1, 2, 3, and 4, you see that they differ slightly. So I've done a lot of um, looking around to try to figure out what exactly um, causes that. But what I've really kind of concluded is that there are variances with individual motors. Um, so even though Rover's got four, albeit identical motors, they're not identical. They are always a little bit different. So on a percentage basis, these are very small differences, um, but nonetheless, they are differences. Um, so what we're going to need to do in, in Rover's code, ultimately, um, when you know differences matter. So for example, if we want to drive straight, it's going to be important that all four motors run at the same speed for the same um, number of seconds or minutes or whatever. So it's going to be important that we kind of implement some sort of adjustment for these differences in the motors. Um, so there's a variety of ways of going about it, um, but what's terrific in having the encoder values is we know exactly what those differences are and we know exactly what, um, wh what measure of adjustment to put in place to, to manage for those differences. But yeah, that's basically what I wanted to point out. Wicked. So yeah, I'm kind of not really sure what the next step is, uh, so I'm going to put some thought into it. Uh, yeah, there's the list of things to do is just crazy. Um, crazy fun, of course, but uh, yeah, I'm just not sure what the very next one is. Uh, whether I want to write some code or actually mount the motors onto Rover. Um, I'm a little hesitant to mount the motors only because I'm having second thoughts about the, the structural design, the architecture. 
and how those motors are actually going to be mounted. Maybe I'll do a video on on what I'm thinking about there and uh, can kind of benefit from from your thoughts and maybe some trials and tribulations that you guys have gone through and uh, go from there. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, any questions, comments, criticisms, whatever, uh, let me know. Uh, Till next time. Cheers.